All right, so this is 3.3 .3 notes, finding the derivative of an inverse function. Now I'm gonna show you three methods. The first is by far the easiest, but it's usually not, you're usually not able to do this on the AP test. And that last Friday before October break, you're gonna have a 3.3 and a 3.4 quiz online on Canvas. So everybody will be taking that from home. All right, so method one is by far the easiest, and it only works when you can actually find the inverse function. So if you remember how to find an inverse function, you first let f of x be y, and then you have to flip-flop your variables, and then you solve for y by taking the, the, the square root, the square root of both sides, and that gives you y, and then you rewrite the inverse. Now there's something we need to pay attention to here real quickly, and that is the only domain we're looking for is where x is positive. So since we only want where x is positive, we don't deal with the negative radical. So this is my inverse function. So if I want to find the derivative of the inverse function, we write it like this, the derivative of the inverse function is going to equal, and then I would, Again, my inverse function is going to, I guess I don't really need these outside parentheses, but my function is x, the square root of x, which is x to the half, and then I just use power rule. And again, this is probably not going to be what you see on the AP exam. So that is how you find an inverse if you can get the inverse function. A lot of times they're going to be like this next problem, and this is method number two. So when we do this, it says find the inverse of the function by interchanging the x and the y. Don't solve for y. The reason we're not solving for y, we can't do it. And then we're going to find dy dx by implicit differentiation, which we just did on the last video. And then we're going to replace some values, and we're going to talk about all that and plug this value into the derivative to actually find the final answer. So the first thing it says is plug in x for y, so f of x is y. So we're going to put an x in there, and then for all of the y's, or for all the x's, I mean, we're going to plug in y's. So this right here would be the inverse function, that right there. So now I'm going to do the derivative of both sides of this with respect to x. So the x dx, or the derivative of x, is going to be 1. And over here will be 3y squared, and we're doing it with the derivative with respect to x. So we got to put dy dx on all of these. 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. We got dy dx, and 1 times 7 is 7. And y is gone, but we still need our dy dx. And then just like we did on the other problems, we're going to factor out our dy dx. And last, we're going to divide it by this parenthesis, and I'm going to move the dy dx to the left side. So dy dx is going to equal 1 divided by this thing, because I'm actually dividing it over there. But I like having my dy dx on the left side. So that right there is dy dx solved for. So we just did a, b, and c. Now this says, replace a value for k in your inverse function that's going to give you your answer. Well. Since this problem is saying we want to find the value when x is 1, we take that equation right here and we stick in 1 for the x. And we get 1 equals y cubed minus 4y squared plus 7y minus 1. Now here's what I would do. We're going to use the calculator because we can't really solve this for y. So by using the calculator, we're gonna, I would probably plug x's in for your y and let y sub 1 equal this whole thing down here, but use x's. And then y sub 2, we're going to let equal this, and we're looking for the intersections. Well, when you do this on your calculator, you get the intersection is the, the x, now this will be x value on your calculator, and it would round to about point. 3944. There's some more stuff going on, but we're going to round to four places. This class, you have to do at least three places. And then we're going to find the value of this at this uh, when x is 1. So we're going to come over here and 
By the way, this thing over here is your derivative of your inverse, this thing. So we can write that as the inverse derivative. And we want that value at one again because this value is one right here. This x is one, so we're gonna stick one in here. And that is going to equal, and then we're gonna have this thing over here, which is our inverse, which is one over 3y squared minus 8y plus 7. And then we stick a little line over here, and we're going to tell them that we're going to do that when y is that answer we just got right there, 0 0.3944. So in other words, we're sticking point, and you shouldn't put this rounded number in there. You should use the whole number that's on your answer key. And we will store that. We can store that inside a, uh, in our calculator. And if you don't know how to do that, I'll show you. But when you get this, we get that this thing rounds to about 2 point, I'm sorry, 0.219 if you're rounding it. 0.219. And that would be the inverse value. Now, I will not do this method. That's not the one I'm going to use most of the time. The one that you're going to use or want to memorize is the one on the Next page, this thing. Oh, we're supposed to do this one up here too, so let's go ahead and do number three. Okay, so we're going to use the same method we just did on the other side. So the first thing we're supposed to do is change this to a Y and then flip-flop your X and Ys. So when I do this one, I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and put X in for my Y. I'm going to get X equals... And then over here on this side, I'm going to have e, e to the y, e to the y, plus the natural log of y. So I went ahead and flip-flopped them. So there's my equation. So now I need to do the derivative of each side. So the derivative of x with respect to x is 1. The derivative of e to the y is e to the y dy dx. And the derivative of y is 1 over y dy dx. And now I'm supposed to solve this for dy dx. So I'm going to factor out my dy dx. And then we're going to solve for each side. So dy dx is going to equal 1 over e to the y plus 1 over y. Okay, so now we need to solve this, uh, the given e inverse equation when x is 3. So we're going to stick 3 in for that x, and we're going to get e to the y plus natural log of y. And again, we're going to take our calculator. And we're going to, and we're going to use X's instead of Y's, but we're going to let this whole part right here be Y1. We're going to set Y2 equal to this part, and we look for their intersections. And we find their intersection using our calculator, and it's going to say X on our calculator, but it's a Y value. We get 1.0744. And so now we're going to take this inverse function, and we're going to stick that value in for the Y. So... The inverse derivative when x is, and that's that 3 up there, when x is 3, is going to equal this thing again, 1 over e to the y plus 1 over y, and it's when y is that value right there. And we're going to put this in our calculator. In other words, we're just sticking this 1.0744, and don't round it. We're going to stick that whole thing in for the in for the y's in this problem, and when we get get that finished, we are going to end up getting that too, and that's going to round to 0 0.259. And if you need me to show you how to do this stuff on a calculator, I will do so. All right, we got two more problems, and now we're going to use this formula right here. So this is kind of the big deal right here. Is that it says let f be a function differentiable on the interval i, so that's x values from some x to some other x. If f has an inverse function, 
F inverse of uh, one or F inverse, then F inverse is differential at any X for which the derivative of F con uh, with plugging in the inverse of X equals zero. In other words, this, it says cannot equal zero. That's because you cannot have zero down there on the bottom. We cannot have any zeros down there on the bottom. So we're going to start this problem off by using this formula. So we are going to use the inverse derivative of x is going to equal 1 over the derivative of f for the inverse of x. Okay, so one of the first things we need to do is on this problem, we need to see, hey, there is, that thing right there is f of x. So we want to find the derivative of this f of x. So the derivative of f of x is going to be, oops, the derivative of x is going to be, the derivative of x is 1, and the derivative of sine is cosine x. Now we want to find we want to find what uh, uh, when x is pi when x is pi we want to figure out what this stuff is so what we need to do now is we need to take the original function and we are going to find the inverse of that function so the inverse of this function means that we're going to put an x in over here, and we're going to put y's in over here. We're flip-flopping the x and y's. So when we solve this, we're, trying, we're going to put pi in here and solve for y. So I'm going to put a pi here. So now I am thinking on the unit circle what value going around here, if I find for y, that I'm going to get pi out for, that this side is going to equal x. Well, at 0, 0, your ordered pair, or the origin, I'm sorry, not the origin, but at 0 radians, your ordered pair is 1, 0. So that would be 0 in there and 0 in there because we're plugging in zeros for y. Well, that isn't going to work. We come up here at pi over 2. So I plug pi over 2 over here, that's 0, 1. I'm going to get 1 plus, uh, sorry, the y value is 1, and I get 1 plus the sine of pi over 2. I'm sorry, that'd be pi over 2. I'm plugging this in. Pi over 2 plus sine of pi over 2. Well, sine of pi over 2 is 1, so pi over 2 plus 1 does not equal that. If I come over here at pi, this means I'm plugging pi values in here. So the, this would give me a pi for this, and then the sine over here is negative 1, 0. So the sine of pi, plugging pi in for there and there, that sine of pi is 0, so that's pi plus 0. So that means that pi equals this side when y is pi. So from that unit circle, the only time this is equal is when y is pi. So y is pi, which means y is the inverse function. Remember, we flip-flopped them. So this means the inverse at pi, because we're sticking this pi in, equals pi. So the inverse at pi equals pi. So now we want to use this thing to find that. So we are supposed to know that we are finding the inverse derivative at pi. And this, this pi is because of this pi up here. We're sticking that pi in there. And then remember, this is going to be the inverse when we have this. So this is kind of the inverse of, now remember, when we do f of pi, we got pi out for that right here. So this is pi. So in other words, we're doing the inverse of pi, which is what we got from this thing. This thing right here is the inverse when we have a pi. It equals that pi. I guess I put it right there. So this is pi. So that means I got to take and plug. Now this is an x here, so I got to plug pi in for this x. So this is one plus cosine pi, which I hope you know the cosine of pi is that x value negative one right there. So that's 
1 minus 1, which gives me a whole value of 0. So what that means is that is the denominator. So that means this, this whole thing right here is equal to 1 over 0, which tells us we have this is an undefined answer. So we went through all that work to find out that 1 over 0 is undefined, so our answer is undefined. So that was kind of ugly. We're going to do one more and then uh, see how that goes. So I'm going to get rid of this stuff. And again, I'm using that problem up there at the top, that formula right up there that you can see right here. I'm trying to find this thing. So if you look here, what I am looking for is the inverse derivative at three, that's what I want because of this three, this is what I'm looking for. So I'm going to use this formula again. So I need to find all the stuff that goes in here. So I need to find the derivative of f and I need to find the inverse of x, but when x is three. So we're gonna do a lot of that same thing that, that we just did a second ago. So here we go. So I'm first going to do the derivative of this f function. So I'm going to find the derivative of f of x. So I'm going to take that power, which is 3. 3 times 1 fourth is 3 fourths. Lower that power by 1. Then I'm going to take 1 times 1 is 1. And the derivative of negative 1 is 0. So there's my inverse right there. So now I want to find this value when this thing right here, when x is 3. So if you remember, we're going to take and we're going to plug 3 in over here. And we are looking for um, so 3 is going to be my x because that was my y. And we are looking for We're looking for values when this thing is going to equal three. Now, this is this is kind of hard. Um, I I would do synthetic division probably. So I am looking for where one fourth y cubed plus y minus four equals zero. So I'm going to do synthetic division. So you take your coefficients. And I could multiply everything by 4, but I'm not going to. Oops, I got 0 y squared. I don't know why I put plus this, because we're doing synthetic division. 1 fourth y cubed plus 0 y squared plus 1 y minus 4. And then we're going to try to find this deal right, right down here. So if I do p over q's, I'm looking for actually factors of 1 and 16 if I multiply these down. So. I'm going to use 2 because I did this ahead of time. And because I did this ahead of time, I know this one works. So I put bring a 1 fourth down. 2 times 1 fourth is a half. You add these two, you get a half. You take 2 times a half is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. And you get a 0 here. So what that tells me is y equals 2 is a solution to this problem. So y equals 2. Now we could try to find more stuff, but there's no sign changes here, so there's no more zeros. I don't know if you remember that from Algebra 2 or not, but there aren't any more. So what that means is I am going to find this denominator part up here in the formula. I'm going to look for f prime of the inverse of 3. Okay, well I just found that the inverse that gave me 3 is that 2. So that means I am looking for f prime of 2. So I'm going to take this 2 and I'm going to plug it into my f prime. So when I do that, I'm going to get 3 fourths times 2 squared plus 1. So when I get 3 fourths times 2 squared, I hope you see 2 squared and the 4 reduced. So this whole thing is 4. So that right there is my denominator part. So what that means is the inverse function, the, the derivative of the inverse function at 3, at this value 3, 
is going to equal this one in the top of the formula over what I found right there for. So uh, we'll get together and if you want me to do some of this, more of this kind of stuff, I will do it for you and uh, I will see you guys later.